Hi, my name is Rebecca Martin, and I'm the organizer of the Chicago Film Lover Exchange. Today we're going to be talking about Vim Vendors, Paris, Texas, which came out in 1984. We're going to be doing this discussion in three parts, and for part one, we're going to be talking about the idea of the father and the mother, and what does that mean, what does that look like. So let's get started. Betsy? So I think when uh, we start talking about parents and family, uh, I think it's best to start with Travis and Walt's parents, because yep. they permeate the whole movie, and yep. their influence influences all the other characters. We learn about them primarily from Travis, the main character, mm -hmm. and um, we learn that Travis's mother was very young mm -hmm. when they got married, but I think the most important thing is that she, he keeps referring to her as not a fancy woman. Mm -hmm. I believe she was Hispanic, actually, yeah. and her husband would make this joke because they were from Paris, Texas. Yeah. And whenever he introduced her, he would say, oh, this is my wife from Paris. And, you know, he'd pause and, and very funny for him. Right. She was embarrassed and insulted, as she should have been, because he was not able to introduce her as a real person. There was this fantasy, and I think that's yep. another thing yep. that permeates fantasy. the whole thing. Mm -hmm particularly about the women in there, but anyway, there's more about that. Um, but that was a, that's really the reason Travis wanted to go to Paris, Texas. Right. It's kind of a roots mm -hmm. search. Mm -hmm. yep. And um, so that, I mean, I feel like uh, what kind of made Travis go not so for four years is that he uh, was all about this fantasy you know, with, with Jane and with Hunter. And Jane just disappointed him and he didn't know what to do, you know, because he had all these plans and he was just living not the reality. Like like Jane and Travis as parents, it's not gonna work. <laughs> yeah, and you know, so. if you're living, trying to live a fantasy, duh, that's not gonna work out. And now Walt, he actually married a French woman. Yep. Things worked yeah. out a little better, mm -hmm. not yeah. that it was perfect, but, yeah. but, he, but there was that was that a line. fantasy there too, so, so go ahead. No, that's okay. No. There was that line where when he goes, where Travis goes, oh, she, his, she was Spanish, and he goes, well, her dad was. Like, he's still sort of, he's almost playing the role of his father, like, he's denying that, like, right. you know. But, yeah. yeah. At the same time, though, I think that the life that they live in Los Angeles is like the ultimate American fantasy. Even though uh, Hunter, you know, isn't their real son, they're living the American dream. I mean, even down to the fact that they are living in suburban Los Angeles, mm -hmm. which in the 1980s, you know, that was the place to be, to live out the American dream. And he was in the advertising business yeah. as well. Big right. billboards, more fantasy stuff. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, I think in got her identity from being a mother, for being a parent, mm -hmm. and it also seemed to be like the glue that uh, held their marriage together right. uh, was Hunter, so he was a central part of it. Yeah, and I, I thought it was interesting that uh, as soon as uh, Walt found out about Travis and he went to go tell Anne, she was immediately concerned about Hunter. Her first like, question to yeah. him after he said he she's found She's like, uh, what she's about like, Hunter? Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. You're going to take my baby away right. from me. There's kind of a deeper thing I noticed throughout the entire movie, even in the background, is that mothers and their children, or mother figures and their children, were always together. Like, uh, even in the background at the airport, there were a group of mothers really? you know, carrying their kids oh, along. Good catch. I didn't and, see that. Yeah. And then, like, uh, you know, how the film ends, uh, you know, Hunter ends up with his mother. And Hunter is always closer throughout the entire movie to Anne than he is with Walter. Right. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. true. I mean, he was, like, torn apart when, after he talked to her on the payphone, you know, he's like, she's so sad, and he was so sad. But what was interesting was when he, he, had, the, he had the, once Travis gave um, Hunter the, the pictures from the photo booth, he suddenly that was like a comfort for him because he don't, he didn't he doesn't remember his mother you know Jane so I thought that was interesting um, I'm actually curious what you guys thought about the Super 8 video um, with how the they 
looked like parents. Did I mean I when I was watching it, it looked like Anne was the mother, and Jane mm -hmm. was just like the free spirit. The mm -hmm. child twirling. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, and she was like fighting Travis, and you know, and yeah. it just didn't look like she was the mother. It looked like Anne was, like Anne was taking Hunter and spinning him, you know, and it, it's just interesting. Well, we, home movies are about that. Mm -hmm. We don't take picture home movies mm -hmm. of our dinner table conversations every mm -hmm. night. We take. Home movies. It's the Instagram of, effect. You're going to make of, idealize of, this. You know, Christmas and birthdays, yeah. and, and, it, and this was at Christmas time. Yeah, that's right. But we do right. find out a, a lot of things there. One, the Rikuda music also plays throughout while the home movie is being played. And as uh, an aside, I think that Rikuda music is a, a, a nonverbal narrative throughout the whole film. Mm -hmm. And I just love it. It just that also speaks to me, and it kind of definitely uh, emphasizes the tone and this and that. But also in that whole movie, I see how affectionate Anne and Travis are, or Anne is to Travis, like she was when she first greeted him when he came back mm -hmm. after four years. It's like mm -hmm. it seems just a little over, you know, yeah. sister-in-law yeah. kind of stuff, you know. But anyway, there yep. was there was one scene we saw when we were watching it, where um, you know, like. Anne leaves her shoes behind, mm -hmm. and then Travis is taking them out. And then red shoes, by the way. Yeah, yeah red yeah, shoes right. as well. <laughs> so there's sort of an implication that maybe there's something a little more than just like her really loving, you know, him. And so. it could be that she's French. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they had a curious. It was curious scene where um, they were out on the patio in the early in the morning, and as she walked away from, Anne walked away from uh, Travis. She kind of slowly took off her apron and glanced yeah. back, almost yeah. like in a sexy type of way. Yeah. And then we see that again where he's uh, singing, I believe. Oh, and yeah. And she's in the, the bedroom and she's half dressed and mm -hmm. she opens up the door just to listen to him. Um, it just seemed overly affectionate. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. And he's singing a Spanish song. Mm -hmm. Yeah which I think ties into what I was saying earlier about children always being more connected to their mothers in this mm -hmm. movie. He's singing the Spanish songs. He's saying Spanish phrases to his own son to try mm -hmm. to form that same mm -hmm. connection. Mm -hmm. But I think because he's singing the Spanish music there, he's getting a sense of family. Interesting. And also, um, Travis, he seemed to know a lot about his parents' relationship and what it seemed like he didn't, but he remembered, you know, this is mom's, uh, last name, like the formal stuff, but the mm -hmm. thing about connectedness with his parents, like he's like, I didn't know that. You right, know? and I, I thought it was interesting when in the beginning when he seemed to forget everything, like right. he didn't remember his mom's maiden name, he didn't even know Anne existed, and you know when he tells the story about Paris, Texas, it's like a joke, it's ha ha mm -hmm. funny, and I just wonder if like when he started to get his memory back, that's when the story became sad. Right. You know, by the time when he was in the bar with Hunter, you know, it just, uh, he was just like, he was broken, you know? Mm -hmm. So like, yeah, I thought that was interesting. One thing I thought about Hunter was, if you talk about father, mother in a strange way, Hunter was this very sort of paternal is too strong, mm -hmm. but he was like a parent thing. Even in that Super 8, there was like a scene of him driving, and yeah. he was like, he carried Travis when Travis was drunk, and he just, and, and even the first time that Travis sees him, when he comes down, he's this very serious little kid in like a grown-up's outfit, like this white button-up shirt yeah. and these black <laughs> pants, and he's like, hello. Like, <laughs> it's, you know, he's just very much like he's going to hold up these four sort of really dysfunctional people. Right, and I thought it was interesting because that was the first time he saw Travis after four years. And I, I felt the nervousness like I was Hunter because the way they angled the camera is, you know, Hunter's view. And Travis's was, face was obscured when they angled right, the camera. Right, right. And then Anne's just kind of looking at him and, you know, he slides down. Um, they're just like, hi, hi. You know, that had to be, I mean, I felt it like a little really awkward. Bender <laughs> so. does that a lot. Yeah. We know that we perceive the mm -hmm. presence of Hunter before we ever see him. That 
the, yeah. you know, the three people are greeting each other, suddenly there's a shot from above. We, it's not a shot of Hunter. It's just a shot from, a, from what, what is Hunter's point. And I just knew immediately that's Hunter looking down. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. it, maybe it's just pretty obvious that, you know, but. Not only that, but there's a lot of like hints as to Hunter's character through a lot of the background shots early on when you're first being introduced to him. Mm -hmm. So him driving in the Super 8 movie was a hint that he really wanted to travel. His name being Hunter, mm -hmm. obviously yeah. being about him, you know, wanting to travel and find something. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact that uh, his whole room is full of travel paraphernalia in one That's way Star or another. Wars. Star it's Wars, Wars, space, it's all about travel, a globe. You're right. Why yeah. can't the car be like a spaceship? Will they make cars like spaceships right. someday? And he's talking on a walkie-talkie to his dad, which not only shows separation between them, but yeah. it also shows that he's having this like fantasy of being out in space. Well, yeah. It yeah. also shows a connection. Yeah. And also yeah. the driving thing, when I saw that Super 8 movie of, um, Hunter was sitting on his father's lap hmm. when he was doing that. I think yeah. that's key. Yeah. And when he goes to hide out, when Walt comes to find him, he's pretending he's driving. Yep. A childhood memory of, of a, a positive memory. Also then, um, when he's waiting in the car for his dad, who's trying to find Jane, you know, we see him again. Sort of. That's a that's a comfort moment. He's hmm. sitting on his, I think, right. from that when he was three years old. I mean, that being you know with his family, sitting on his dad's lap. He's just a kid driving a car. You know, he's a smart kid too. He knows all about the oh yeah, the and space I, stuff. You yeah, know. Uh, were you gonna say something? He's I, very realistic too. Like after they watch the Super 8 movie and he's in the bedroom with his mom Anne and they're, he's changing clothes and he's like, do you still, do you think uh, Travis' dad still loves her? Well, that's not the real her. That's just yeah. a movie. Yeah, the yeah. you know? galaxy far, yeah. far away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's yeah. a good point, yeah. yeah. Uh, I thought an interesting scene was the whole thing when Travis was like, I want to look like a father. What does a father look like? And he's going through like the magazines and then the maid comes in and she's like, do you want to be a poor father or a rich father? And you can only, you can't be in between. It's just the poor or rich. And so anyways, he's, of course he chooses rich. Who would want to be a poor father? Anyways, um, so that whole scene, like, when he goes to get Hunter, he's all confident. Like, he's, he's, he's like, I'm a father now. And Hunter sees that. He, and then suddenly, you know, that, that whole thing when they're walking across from each other and imitating each other like father and son, yeah. I thought that was really touching part, you know, and that's when they become close. I think it's interesting that the woman who tells him what a father looks like is also a Spanish woman, mm -hmm. Hispanic woman. Mm -hmm. And when I at first saw the movie for the first time, it's like, what's this guy, who is this guy walking in the desert with a suit and tie on? Yes. And I wonder if the director didn't want us at least to think, or, or maybe it was Travis wanting to think, you know, I think this is maybe what a, you know, in his kind of And that's a fantasy of, thing um, again delusion right. world that he's living in, yeah. um, maybe yeah. this is what a father looks like. Right. And, and then when you mentioned about Hunter being in his white shirt and, yeah. you know, it's like he knows what a father looks like. Right. Yep. Well, one thing I found really interesting about that particular scene, though, is that, you know, he's dressed all formal. It's, it's kind of stuffy at first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But what ultimately brings the bond together is him breaking that. Yeah. So not yes. only yes. not only is he confident and he's projecting this richness, but also a little bit of stuffiness. It's really breaking that down that brings them together. So it really shows, I think, how much of a facade that image is. Mm -hmm. And what really draws them together is their shared personalities. Right, and um, we're getting to the end here, so I wanted to talk about the end scene. Like, um, before we get to the um, Jane and Hunter seeing each other for the first time, um, when Travis is doing the recording for Hunter, he's just so grateful that Hunter made him feel like a father. Like that was a huge thing. And he said, I love you more than myself, which is amazing because he's been gone for four years. And just that whole uh, sacrificial type thing where he knows that he should be with Jane. So what do you guys think about the end? 
really problematic mm -hmm. from an ethical perspective, not from a narrative perspective. Okay, got it. What about you guys? What were your thoughts? Um, I think that Travis, what he did, he brought Hunter and his mother together. Mm -hmm. That was his job. Travis acknowledged a couple of different times, Travis is broken. One, in one of the conversations, either with Jane or with Hunter, um, he said, I didn't know I had so much rage. And there were a couple of other things like that. I think that Hunter, or that Travis, did that job, brought his son back to his mother, and or whatever, right. brought them together, and then he had to go off and fix himself. And he has to do that alone. And I think one of the big differences is this time he drives away. He doesn't walk away. Mm -hmm. He says goodbye first and then drives away, yeah. which gives it more. One thing really interesting that we picked up on when we were watching it was uh, as he was driving away, there's a billboard in the background that says, together we will, we will make it. <laughs> yes. Wow, that's cool. So he's driving away from that togetherness. Yeah. yeah, I think him leaving the tape, he definitely had a hard time dealing with things with him running off, you know, for four years and like in the wilderness and then not being able to, because it seemed like at that point he would be able to tell Hunter himself how he felt because mm -hmm. they had bonded, right. but he did it through a tape. Um, yeah. And then also when he met with uh, Jane finally face to face, you know, the one the mirror, she couldn't even see through the at the peep show. She right. couldn't see him. So it, you think that would be enough where he can talk with her, but no, he did the extra and right. turned his chair around, like like over, right. you know, right. uh, blocked her out. Right. Um, so, uh, yeah, I just think he had a hard time dealing with things. Definitely. Um, Emily? I, um, well, one thing, it, so I don't know if it's really about Travis leaving, but one thing I wanted to say was, um, Travis was very into the fantasy, like you said, Betsy, but then in the end, that couple had more intimacy than Walt and Ann did in some ways. Right. He understood her so well, and I, he clearly knew they couldn't be together. Mm -hmm. But I don't, I think he was leaving Hunter with her for her in some ways. Right. Like to give mm. this to her because she was so lost and mm. he saw her so lost. Yeah, definitely. At, at the same time, it, it really, if you look at it from the big picture of things though, of mm -hmm. how things were, was it really healthy, you know what I mean, to leave Hunter behind in that environment? Right. Maybe this in a mother who moment. didn't know him. Right. Right. So, um, yes. really sorry to do this guys, but <laughs> we've come to the end of the discussion. Um, yeah, so thank you for being a part of part one, and uh, we'll be at part two next. <laughs>